Hello again and welcome to the 2014 State of the City. I am Benish Brown and I'm President and CEO of the Tacoma Regional Convention and Visitor Bureau and I really want to thank you all for attending today. Now would you please rise for the presentation of the colors by the Stadium High School Navy Junior ROTC and for our national anthem which will be sung by Emily Cook. She's with the Greater Tacoma Convention and Trade Center. Please remain standing until the ROTC has left the room. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land Thank you very much, uh, Stadium High School Navy, Junior ROTC, and Emily. I have not heard Emily sing before. I've heard of her. Now I will never forget her. Emily, beautiful. <laughs> Again, good afternoon and welcome to the State of the City Address by the Mayor of the City of Tacoma, the Honorable Marilyn Strickland. I didn't give you time to get seated, did I? <laughs> I am proud to represent the Convention and Visitor Bureau today. We are the coordinating arm for tourism and sales marketing representing the city of Tacoma and Pierce County. And in our industry, we believe that there is a life cycle model, a model that says, Build a place people want to visit, and you'll build a place where people want to live. Build a place where people want to live, 
and you'll build a place where people want to work. Build a place where people want to work, and you'll build a place where business has to be. Build a place where business has to be, you'll build a place where people have to visit. That's Tacoma 2.0. This event would not be possible without the generosity of all of our fantastic corporate table sponsors. And right now, we would like to thank those sponsors, the City of Tacoma, Community and Economic Development Department of the City of Tacoma, Murray Pacific Corporation, Neighborhood and Community Services Department, and the Human Services Department of the City of Tacoma, the Port of Tacoma, Puget Sound Energy, Thompson Consulting Group, and Workforce Central. So thanks to all of you for your generous support and contributions to assist in making this event possible. Thank you. We would also at this time like to recognize uh, all of you are very important people, but we do have some very important guests with us today that we would like to recognize. I will call their name in a roll call fashion, and after uh, they are presented and stand, I would love to ask the audience for a round of applause. Uh, former Mayor Bill Barsma, City of Tacoma. Port of Tacoma, Connie Bacon. City of Tacoma, David Bow. City of Tacoma, Council Member Marty Campbell. Former Mayor Brian Ebersole, State Representative Jake Fay, Congressman Denny Heck, Tacoma City Council Anderson Ibsen, Congressman Derek Kilmer, City of Tacoma Joe Lonergan, Port of Tacoma Dick Marzano, City of Tacoma Ryan Mello, Former Mayor Harold Moss, Port of Tacoma Don Meyer, Port of Tacoma Claire Petrick, Pierce County Council Doug Richardson, City of Tacoma Robert Toms, Tacoma Schools Karen Vial, City of Tacoma Lauren Walker, City of Tacoma Victoria Woodards, and Colonel Hodges. Please, ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause. As our neighborhoods, businesses, and government, and individual citizens come together for this State of the City Address, you are encouraged to be a part of the conversation in real time. We want you to engage with Mayor Strickland throughout this event and especially during her address. There will be a live Twitter feed displaying your feedback and thoughts. The hashtag for this conversation on Twitter is SOTC253, as in State of the City 253, SOTC253. In order for your tweets to be visible, there is a little tweak to this now, in order for your tweets to be visible, please make sure your Twitter account is publicly viewable. You can participate on Facebook as well using that same hashtag. And again, ensure that your post is set to be publicly visible. Today's event is in collaboration with the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber of Commerce. And it's now my honor to present the Chamber's President and CEO. Just going into his third year with the Chamber, Tom Pearson has led the momentum of success in Tacoma in cooperation with his board and business leaders, community leaders, and the support of his staff. Tom is passionate about supporting the needs of our local businesses and strongly believes in building partnerships for the betterment of our community, working together with the city for the prosperity and growth of Tacoma's economy. Please help me in giving an enthusiastic welcome to Tom Pearson. Well, thank you, Benish. And I uh, just want to thank everyone for being here today. You know, today is a very exciting day, and we are very proud of being part of the state of the city. At the Chamber, our vision is to lead, 
the way to exceptional business and community growth. And you started to see those results in 2013. Bruce Kendall, at, at his annual meeting at the EDB, called the Tacoma Pierce County the region of boom, and for good reason. We saw the record numbers of investments in our community and by our businesses, investing multi-billion dollars range, and it continues to grow in 2014. While these commitments to the future of Tacoma must be heralded, there is more going on here than just that. In Tacoma, we can measure what's happening on the surface through those investments, but I think what people don't see on the outside is what is making this place the place to do business. So what doesn't show up on those list of investments? What doesn't show up on the balance sheets? It's leadership. Yes, the answer is leadership. When you look at the business leaders, labor leaders, Port of Tacoma, our higher ed institutions, our many community colleges and technical colleges, our local paper, the News Tribune, public schools, elected officials, and of course, our mayor of this great city. What you see is leadership. And there's no other place in the state of Washington where leadership matters more. As our community, when we stand together behind solid leadership, unified, we're stronger than ever. One great example of this has been through the 167 Completion Coalition. United States Congressman Denny Helt, heck, led the way. <laughs> Help, heck, you know, it's all the same, but. <laughs> Danny heck, helped lead the way. But it was, it was the collective effort that really moved the needle. 167 wasn't on the radar of many officials statewide, but today we're talking about a statewide transportation package, and that's only because of the efforts led by Congressman Denny Heck. And we will see the completion of 167 soon. We all are working together, and as another member of Congress, Congressman Derek Kilmer says, of course, he says this in a much more elegant way than I will. But, but you know, we all can be in a, in a boat together, and that's one thing. But we all need to row together. And now that doesn't mean we don't always agree on everything. Matter of fact, you can trust me on this. We don't. But we need to really push those issues that are those priorities and set aside those that, we can't, that might divide us and focus on what really matters. And recently, what really matters is jobs. Plain and simple. And completing 167, that's 80,000 jobs to be exact. We see great leaders rising up in all corners of our city to bring people together, establish partnerships, strengthen the economy. As these partnerships continue to fruition, we're also seeing job creation, people investing in our community. And we're seeing groups like Workforce Central partnering in helping business capitalize and our highly qualified veteran works workforce. We're seeing SpaceWorks helping creative entrepreneurs launch their business in Tacoma. And we're seeing the state investing in University of Washington Tacoma Law School. We're seeing growth, creating opportunities, collaborative, collaborative leadership that we have come to expect here in Tacoma. And as Tacoma moves forward into the next phase of growth, we need to make sure that we understand Tacoma's identity. We are a complex economy. We are a multi-ethnic region. We are globally connected. We are a thriving metro city. And we should recognize and embrace this identity, this complexity, and these are the traits that we must take advantage of and tout. We have the characteristics that is the envy of every community in this state. And all these components put together is who we are and we are attracting employers and employees alike. So in conclusion, leadership matters. And when business is good, life is good. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I do want to remind you uh, of the Twitter uh, opportunity, the, the opportunity to converse live as part of this State of the City Address. 
And uh, the Twitter, the hashtag is SOTC253, and make sure your settings are set to be publicly viewable. Tom mentioned leaders. A leader is someone who shows us the possibilities, they point us in the right direction, and then they set the pace for getting us where we need to go. Mayor Strickland leads from the premise that improving the various aspects of everyday life for Tacoma residents is a big part of creating a better place to live overall. Marilyn Strickland was sworn in as mayor of Tacoma in January of 2010 and was reelected to a second term in 2013. Born in Seoul, South Korea, Mayor Strickland is a graduate of the University of Washington and holds a master's degree in business administration from Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. Mayor Strickland has professional experience in both the public and private sectors. She served as development officer for the Tacoma Public Library and has held management positions with the American Cancer Society, Starbucks Coffee Company, and J. Ray Communications, where she worked with Tacoma Public Utilities to help launch Click Network, America's first municipally owned telecommunications network. Ladies and gentlemen, with her report on the state of the city of Tacoma, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Mayor Marilyn Strickland. everyone. You can be seated now. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for that warm welcome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of my city council colleagues and the city of Tacoma, I am pleased you are here today for the 2014 State of the City Address. And this event is hosted in collaboration with the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber of Commerce. And thank you to your staff for the great organization to pull this together and to get everyone seated at tables. And this event is sold out, by the way. So before I begin the meat of my speech, I first want to thank some people. Back in 2010, I was approached by a group called Go Local. And it's a group that really promotes local businesses here in Tacoma and making sure that we shop locally. And they really approached me with the idea of saying, why don't you do a State of the City address? And to be honest with you, I hadn't thought of it because it had not been done in decades in the city of Tacoma. So I just want to give them a shout out and thank them for making this a tradition in Tacoma again. And I expect every future mayor to always give a State of the City address every single year. I also want to thank the Tacoma Regional Convention and Visitor Bureau Director, Benish Brown, for serving as our MC today and for being such a fantastic and enthusiastic partner in all the things we try to do to increase tourism in Tacoma and Pierce County. Thank you so much for your leadership. And then I would like to thank, um, again, what I call my, um, my cabinet and my bench, and the people that I turn to for advice probably far more often than you all realize. Mayors Barzma, Mayors Moss, Mayors Ebersol, and Mayor Vial. Thank you for your friendship and for being there for me as I do this job. So when I was selecting a theme for this Day of the City Address, we kind of bandied some ideas around, and we came up with Tacoma 2.0. And what exactly does that mean? If you look in a dictionary, 2.0 means this, to denote a superior or more advanced version of an original concept. So in short, 2.0 is a better version of the last one. Tacoma 2.0 challenges all of us to do some heavy lifting to advance this great city. It challenges us to acknowledge that cities change because society changes. And it challenges all of us to connect the dots and leverage our assets, and we have many. I like to remind people of the incredible assets or base from which we start in the city of Tacoma. First and foremost, Tacoma is an international waterfront city with a beautiful stock of historic property. That is the physical place that we start from. We are home to one of the largest ports on the west coast. We have the Center for Urban Waters. We have 43 miles of shoreline. We have what I believe is the best park system in the United States. We have a two-year and four-year college system 
that literally transforms lives and meets the needs of regional employers. We have housing that is affordable for people at all income levels, and we have one of the best public utility systems in the country that provides clean energy and also provides low cost power to our customers. We have a K through 12 public school system that is really holding themselves accountable and getting better every year. Since 2010, they increased their graduation rate from 55% to over 70% in four short years. That is a citywide effort and we should congratulate them for that work. We have Joint Base Lewis McCord, the largest military installation on the West Coast, and this community is always warm and welcoming to our military personnel and veterans as well, and I'm so proud of that. And we also have one of the best museum districts in the entire country, and we have a great love for the arts. So as a city, we have made significant public investments over decades, ranging from the Tacoma Dome, the renovation of Union Station, we even had the audacity to put a University of Washington Tacoma branch campus in a dilapidated warehouse district and has won awards for architecture and urban renewal. We cleaned up the Foss Waterway, which was once a Superfund site. We built a convention center and we invested in commuter and light rail. Every one of my predecessors sitting right here had a hand in that. So that's the platform from which I get to start. Now these massive public investments were made for many reasons to improve the quality of life for people in Tacoma, to improve our reputation, but most importantly, to set the stage for private investment. Private investment that will grow our tax base by attracting more tourists, more residents, and ultimately creating more family wage jobs. The best thing we can do for business is to arm them with customers who have buying power. That's the best thing we can do for businesses. Now we're fortunate to be in Tacoma especially right now during what I call a very transformational period in history, where residents, where business, where nonprofit organizations, elected officials are acutely aware of something really important. We must work together. We do not have the luxury of being divided about anything. And even though we may not agree on everything, we have to find a way to come together. And we have to be willing to come up with the resources to do the important work. Things don't happen for free. We have to be willing to pay for the things that we want to happen in this community. And we must do it. Yes, clap on that. Thank you. <laughs> and we must dedicate our resources, our energy, and our talent with focus and with purpose. Our city's growth and success must reflect Tacoma's values and priorities. And it must benefit our neighborhoods, our business district, and most importantly for me, the 200,000 people who choose to live in Tacoma and call Tacoma home. I serve on lots of regional and national boards and commissions, but the people to whom I am always accountable are the 200,000 people that I represent in the city of Tacoma. So how do we get there? I'm gonna call this the four pillars. We grow jobs and private investment. We educate our youth. We improve transportation and we invest in infrastructure and we raise our city's profile. So let me talk a bit about jobs and private investment. One of our priorities is to foster neighborhood, community, and economic vitality. And like many cities across the US, we've navigated through a number of challenges in the past few years. But fortunately, there are some very big wins that we can celebrate. State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is here. One of the greatest successes we had last year was State Farm's decision to open a regional office in our downtown core. Tacoma now joins cities such as Atlanta, Dallas, and Phoenix as regional hubs for State Farm, a Fortune 50 company, thank you very much. They now occupy more than 300,000 square feet of Class A office space in the former Russell Building and in the Columbia Bank Building. And they employ over 1,300 people who contribute energy and vibrancy to our downtown core and they've been a big boost to our commercial real estate market. Internet ID, a local company you may not have heard of, but they are in the cybersecurity space and they continue to grow, demonstrating that Tacoma, Washington has an opportunity to be a cybersecurity capital. 
The City of Tacoma also has launched a business recruitment and incentive program to attract business with the goal of attracting 250 additional jobs for the remainder of 2014 and roughly 1,500 jobs in the next two years in financial services, IT and cybersecurity, creative arts and design, logistics, clean water technology, healthcare, and military defense. We also have a lot to celebrate with commercial development. Tacoma's investment of $30 million at Point Ruston included a completion of a mile-long walkway, a large portion which opened to the public last April. In September 2013, it provided the missing link between Ruston Way and Point Defiance Park. And if you've not been there, you need to get down there and check it out. It is phenomenal, it is beautiful, and it's one of our best assets as a city. But in addition to enhancing recreation and public access, here's what this investment has also spurred. We have a 173 unit Copper Line Apartments which completed construction and its first residents now live there. And we started construction on the second project. Construction on Point Ruston's retail core is projected to start this year and continue into 2015, occupying about 250,000 square feet of commercial space, including a nine screen cineplex, high tech, and more than 350 residences. And there's also more good news in the housing area. Along the Foss Waterway, there will be 163 new units of apartments. This project broke ground in February, and we expect to have occupants there by 2015. Additionally, on Broadway, there'll be more apartments. And also, we're projecting about 1,700 new market rate and family units that will break ground in the next few years, primarily in the downtown area. Here's what this means. This helps us meet our goal of increasing our population and attracting more people. When more people live here and work here, it increases our tax base, and that makes mayors very happy. <laughs> and ultimately, the goal is to, to sustain this growth that balances the development efforts. We want to grow, but we want to do it in a way that is smart and respectful of our neighborhoods. We want to make sure that we are inclusive and include affordable housing in that mix. We want to make sure that we are creating dense, compact, walkable neighborhoods with amenities close by. That's what makes great cities in America. Now what's interesting about Tacoma's population growth is that we've had some booms and some dips. In the early 1900s, in the 1950s, and in 1990, we actually seen some very dramatic spikes in population. But since then, it's been fairly flat. So we know how important it is for the city of Tacoma to attract more people who want to live here, who want to visit here, who want to buy property here. So I want to talk about a few things that I think are really important. When we think of economic development, we sometimes traditionally think of taxes and regulation. Well, the new model for economic development is this. Jobs follow talent, period. And jobs are created when we invest in things. I had the opportunity last November to go to Kansas City and attend the Mayor Summit on Entrepreneurship hosted by the Kauffman Foundation. While I was there, I learned about a program called One Million Cups which boosts entrepreneurship in mid-sized cities by pulling the startup community together and helping entrepreneurs gain insight into how they can improve their businesses. Here's how it works. Every week, One Million Cups offers two local entrepreneurs an opportunity to present their startups to a, verse, to a diverse audience of mentors, advisors, and entrepreneurs and get real-time feedback from the audience. It gives them access to people that they would normally not have access to. The concept is really about forming relationships and building community one cup of coffee at a time. The entrepreneurs bring the ideas, the audience brings the suggestions and advice, and the coffee is free. After seeing a One Million Cups presentation in Kansas City, I was blown away, and I knew this would be a good fit for the city of Tacoma. So I'm pleased to announce today that the University of Washington Tacoma's Veterans Incubator for Better Entrepreneurship, otherwise known as VIBE, has successfully applied to the Kauffman Foundation for Tacoma to participate in One Million Cups. And we are going to join 25 cities around the country and we'll launch this in mid-May. Stay tuned. Now in the same vein, I want Tacoma to stake a claim. And I want it to be this. I want Tacoma, Washington be, to be known as the best city in the United States for veterans to start a business. I want to own that position and I want to live up to the promise of that position. And that means we have to look at some policies about how we support our veterans, whether it's getting access to space works, whether it's some tax relief, 
but how we can make this happen for veterans, because we know that people who have fought for our country deserve to thrive when they decide to get out of the military. And because we have such close proximity to Joint Base Lewis McCord, the Defense Department's premier military installation on the West Coast, we have an incredible opportunity to engage our military and veteran community. And here's an interesting statistic. Veteran-owned businesses and veterans who start businesses actually have a higher success rate than most business owners. So we are actually tapping into a very skilled and successful group of people. And Colonel, I want you to know that we are committed to making sure that our veterans are treated with respect and that they can succeed. So thank you for being here. Now, some of you know me as the education mayor because I'm always putting my nose in education. But this is an important thing to do because a city cannot thrive if the education system doesn't work well for everyone. And critical to this is really our future workforce. Tacoma Public Schools, along with many community partners, have made great strides in the past few years. I talked about the increase in graduation rates, and that's something we should all be proud of, but we should not rest on that. We should have graduation rates in the high 80s and 90s and strive to graduate every child. But as we work together, there are some great programs that we've launched, and here's one of them. Summer Jobs 253 is something that we launched last year as a pilot program. And thanks to the hard work of city staff, the REACH Center, and Tacoma Public Schools and Workforce Central, we created, planned, and executed a pilot program in less than six months. Nearly 50 students completed the program, and six of them were offered permanent full-time jobs. We were recognized by the U.S. Conference of Mayors as one of five programs nationally that successfully incorporated a robust financial literacy component. So we provided jobs for students, we gave them training, we showed them financial literacy, and for some students who were credit deficient, they were actually able to graduate on time with their cohorts. This was a life-changing experience for many of these students, and this year we want to expand the program. So here's my first ask of you. If you are here in the audience today, and you are an employer, and you think you could take on a student this summer, there's a table right outside the door when you leave here today. Get information about Summer Jobs 253, because this is one of those efforts that can really change the life of a student. Some of these students have a hard time finding jobs. Adults have a hard time finding jobs sometimes. But a lot of students are told, you have no experience whatsoever. By spending time this, on this program, a student can say, I have experience please hire me, I'm a good person who can work for a good company. So with that said, I'm going to challenge us again as a community, City Hall, other government organizations, business community, nonprofit, Summer Jobs 253 is a worthy investment. If you can make a donation, that would be great. But again, if you can help a student by providing a job or two or a dozen, that would be fantastic. And to the young people who are listening to me today, I challenge you to get involved in your community as well. So let me move on to the next pillar, transportation and infrastructure. And before I get to some of the successes we've had in that area, I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to say an elephant in the room, because I think there are a couple of elephants in the room. We cannot ignore the fact that a city the size of Tacoma and the second largest county in the state has a local public transportation system that does not meet the needs of the Puget Sound. And while sales taxes for Pierce Transit have stabilized, the bus system is one-third smaller than it was merely three, five years ago. That's resulted in the loss of riders. When people don't ride the bus, they're in cars. And we want public transportation to be part of the cornerstone of what makes Tacoma a great city. Another elephant in the room is that the condition of Tacoma streets are not in good shape. That's not news to anyone. But here's the deal. We are not going to solve this problem without a large infusion of revenue. We cannot cut our way to better streets in Tacoma any more than we can cut our way to better bus service. And another elephant in the room was the disappointment of being unable to pass something to get Highway 167 built. But here's what I say to all of us. If we want these things to happen, we have to put skin in the game and find a way to get to yes. Investing in infrastructure isn't just about economic development from the standpoint of how a city looks. It creates jobs. If you want to create jobs that pay well, invest in infrastructure. That is something that we must embrace together. And one of the things that I've said, if we can form a coalition of business, labor, nonprofits, and come down to Olympia and rally for Highway 167, it can't be that hard to find a way to fix Tacoma streets with the same amount of gusto and enthusiasm. So let's get it done. So let's talk about the good parts of transportation. 
The city of Tacoma for the first time now has, is working on a comprehensive transportation plan and we have appointed a citizens commission to really figure out how we have a plan that respects all modes of transportation and helps us easily navigate the city of Tacoma. We are going to extend Tacoma Link and Tacoma is one of the few cities in the US in my opinion that debates where the link should go, not whether or not we want one because you'd be surprised at stories I hear from other mayors about people who just want no part of light rail. The good thing about Tacoma is that we're clamoring for it in various neighborhoods. We just don't have the resources to satisfy everyone. And ultimately, long term, I want to see us have light rail that connects our city to SeaTac International Airport. <laughs> And that's going to be a big old heavy lift coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. After years of construction, the Murray Morgan Bridge, or the 11th Street Bridge to some, opened last year, creating easy access to the port from downtown. In fact, a great deal of business and development activities have occurred in the port and surrounding areas. Our port's unique position as a deep water harbor and access to two rail lines has made it an ideal location for companies seeking trade opportunities with the Far East. It's a unique historical landmark that graces our skyline and is highly visible from Interstate 5 and most of downtown. And speaking of visibility, it is time for us as a city to be proud of who we are and raise our visibility on a national and regional scale. In the last 16 months, Tacoma actually has raised its regional and national profile by appearing favorably in over 30 regional and national publications, including Forbes, USA Today, Bloomberg, AAA Magazine, GI Jobs, The Seattle Times, The Puget Sound Business Journal. We've won national awards and grants and recognition from the US Conference of Mayors, the Association of Washington Cities, and the National League of Cities. And we've been recognized by regional organizations such as the Puget Sound Regional Council and FutureWise. A recent article from Atlantic City states that the US economy is now driven by 12 regions. 12 regions in America drive the US economy. Tacoma belongs to one of those regions. We must acknowledge that we have a strong identity as a city, but that we are part of the Seattle-Tacoma-Bellevue region. We are, <laughs> I'm gonna repeat that. We want to acknowledge that we can have a strong identity as a city, but we are part of the Seattle-Tacoma-Bellevue region. We make up the 12th largest media market in the country. We are the heart of a region that is called Cascadia, that expands from Portland, Oregon, all the way up to Vancouver, BC. And we are Tacoma, we are the heart of this area. And I remind people this, when you fly into the airport here, they say welcome to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. We are the Tacoma in that airport. Let's, let's always remember that. <laughs> So as Tacoma's visibility increases, the communities that surround us will also experience positive benefits. In 2013, speaking of airports, SeaTac accommodated over 34 million passengers. It was ranked the 15th busiest airport in the US last year. And with all the attractions that Tacoma has to offer, we need a stronger presence at the airport that isn't just a brochure. We need a presence that says, Tacoma, Washington is an option when you get off the plane. We've made great strides in that area through the partnership between the Tacoma Convention Center. And we also have good news as well. Events were up 8% over 2012. And in 2013, the Convention Center attendance was up over 10%. The Convention Center had its best month ever in October of 2013 with, the, with an occupancy rate of 77.5%. That is fantastic news. <laughs> In 2013, we saw the opening of the Holiday Inn Express downtown, and I, along with many others, am eagerly awaiting the groundbreaking of the Marriott Residence Inn on the Foss Waterway. Additionally, the city of Tacoma has received responses to an RFI for construction of a four to five star hotel at the convention center. The city council hopes to consider approval for this later in the spring. Now, when I moved back here from Atlanta back in the early 90s, I attended an event at the Pantages Theater. And this was really about renovating the theater. And what I learned having, after having been away for a while is that Tacoma invests in the arts. And the arts are a cornerstone of our economic development strategy. We have a sister city relationship with Biot now in France. And we also know, if you go down Pacific Avenue, the Tacoma Art Museum is building a brand new wing 
and they're going to invest $15.5 million to house Western art. That's going to be a big attraction for the city of Tacoma. So I'm going to get to some technical stuff, so just stay with me here. Financial stability is something that we must have because for all these great ideas, we have to have a way to pay for the things that we want to do. So last year, I created a fiscal sustainability task force. And in English, that means we don't have enough money to do the things we want to do. <laughs> so what we decided to do was this. We gathered people from all sectors, and we sat down and looked at the city budget. And we said, OK, here's the money coming in. Here's what we want to do. How do we cut expenses but find ways to generate revenue to make sure that we have the resources to do what we want? And instead of doing budgeting every year or every two years, I want to challenge our staff and our city manager to take a five-year approach to doing this. We need to know in advance what our finances will be so that we can plan accordingly and not deal with uncertainty of not having money. Because there was nothing more horrible than having to make $90 million worth of cuts a couple years ago to the city budget. So we want to plan way in advance, and I'm going to challenge people to do this and do it well. So when I first started coming up with my remarks today, I had a big old laundry list of all the things happening in Tacoma. And I have to share a sample with you. The reopening of the Murray Morgan Bridge and working with the state to reduce our debt in half for that. The Swan Creek bike trails on the east side of Tacoma. The continued success of SpaceWorks, a great partnership with the chamber. Neighborhood cleanups, progress made on the Water Ditch Trail, the Prairie Line Trail, seed funding for the University of Washington Tacoma's law school, and this is going to happen. Groundbreaking for the new media center at Bates Technical College the passage of both school bond levies and operating levies in the city of Tacoma during what wasn't exactly the best economic time. Convention center bookings increasing, Monday mixers connecting businesses with resources, completion of the Pacific Avenue streetscape, completion of Alaska Street and renovation of Wapato Park, the renovation of Stadium Way, the opening of the Hilltop Regional Medical Center, market rate housing coming to Hilltop, selection of Tacoma, Washington as a Rose Fellow with the Urban Land Institute, the return of the military parade to downtown Tacoma after a 50-year absence, new restaurants, new small businesses, national recognition as a gay-friendly city, Bass Pro Shops opening this summer in South Tacoma, improving graduation rates, reduction in gang violence, our thoughtful and compassionate approach to legalizing marijuana, regional and national recognition for Tacoma, creating main streets in the Lincoln District and South Tacoma, downtown wayfinding. That's just a partial list, and I'm sure I forgot some things. With all the positive things happening or in progress, we know our city is worth visiting and worth investing in. So here is an interactive exercise I have. So if you have a mobile device, if you have a Twitter feed, if you have a Facebook page, I'm going to ask you to do something. And this is where the hashtag SOTC253 comes into play. What positive message do you want to share with people within or outside of Tacoma about our great city? What positive message do you want to share with people within or outside of Tacoma about our great city? I'm going to Facebook this. Now, I was told there's a 30 second delay with the feed, so we'll just see what comes up. How many people have a device and are actually planning on posting something? Would you raise your hand or your device? Okay. And the reason we're doing this is to come, a lot of cities have great things going for themselves, but so much is about the messaging. There are messages that we have no control over because we don't have a mainstream TV station here. So we have to rely on other communities to tell the stories about Tacoma. And we know that sometimes bad news is what makes news. But there are a lot of great things happening. So this is a chance for us to get out into the Twitter universe and post some great messages about Tacoma. So again, what positive message do you want to share with the people within or outside of Tacoma about our great city? Hashtag SOTC253. OK, so while we're waiting for those tweets to pop up, I'm going to talk about something that we have engaged on based on what our fiscal sustainability task force asked us to do. Aside from looking at our finances, they made a really good suggestion to talk about a visioning process for the city of Tacoma. And I will tell you that when I first heard the word visioning, I thought, oh, great, here we go again. Another group of stakeholders getting together in a plan that sits on a shelf. 
Well, that's not what this is about. This is really about us as a city coming together and having everyone have a chance to give input about where we want to go in the next five years and what's going to map our course for the next decade. This will determine how we spend our resources, where we go as a city, but also give us a unified purpose and focus so that we can continue to move Tacoma forward. There will be seven areas that we're going to concentrate on. Public health and safety. And my vision for that is for Tacoma to say we are one of the safest mid-sized cities on the West Coast. Quality of life and livability. I want Tacoma to be known as a great city at any stage in your life. Economic vibrancy. Growth in jobs through highly qualified workforce, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Culture, arts, and recreation. Tacoma is a fun place to visit and live. Educational opportunity and access. Access, choice, and not just going to school, graduating with a meaningful degree. Government performance. We want policies that are rooted in equity. We want our workforce at City Hall to reflect the community we serve. And we want to make sure that equity is present in transportation, in housing, in job opportunities, in how we contract. And finally, mobility and infrastructure. We need enough revenue to make the necessary investments. That's not a hard one. So let's share some of these. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, for mentioning our increasing graduation rate. Anything else? What's, what's the speed on this feed? It's slow, yeah, thank you. <laughs> in the last 16 months, Tacoma has appeared favorably in over 30 regional and national media publications. So you get the idea here. We're trying to get messages out on the Twitter universe that really are positive about Tacoma. So in conclusion, I want to say this. I first want you to take a look around and see who's in this room. In my opinion, this is a cross-section of our city. We represent different groups, different ethnicities, different disciplines, different backgrounds, different ages, and this is really the essence of what Tacoma is. We are a diverse city, and we are diverse in every sense of the word. As we talk about how we want to move forward, remember this. We're an international waterfront city with unique neighborhoods and a diverse population. We have made significant public investment. We're emerging from a long recession and need the time, talent, and the resources of everyone to advance Tacoma to 2.0. It's time to raise our profile, but most importantly, it's time to raise our standards. Tacoma has nothing to apologize for. This is a fantastic city that we should all be proud of. And we will do this through jobs and private investment, a continued strong focus on education, and you hear me say this ad nauseum, education is not just the responsibility of the school district. Every single person has a responsibility. If you are an employer, you can help. If you're a social service agency, you can help. We have to help families become stronger so our students can do well because we cannot expect them to succeed when their basic needs aren't being met. This is incredibly crucial. We have to improve transport, thank you, transportation and infrastructure. Again, raising our profile. So this is a challenge to all of us today. When we talk about Tacoma 2.0, it recognizes that this is a good city. But now it's time to acknowledge it, to be proud of it, to share it with the world, and to really raise our standards because Tacoma is a fantastic city. I want to close with a quote from Judy Garland. I'm, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> you don't want me to sing it. And here's what she said. This is about identity and pride. Always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of somebody else. Tacoma, let's be the first-rate version of ourselves. <laughs> Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue, SeaTac International Airport, we are part of this fantastic region and one of the 12 economies that drive the United States. Thank you so much for all of your work. Thank you for coming today, and let's make it happen in 2014.
Thank you, Mayor Strickland, for the challenges. Thank you for the reality checks, the elephants in the room. Thank you for the vision, and thank you for the glimpse of Tacoma 2.0, a better version of us. Let's give her another round of applause. The only other order of business before we are adjourned, I would like if you would join me in recognizing State Representative Jeannie Darnell, who uh, we didn't. Senator. Senator, Senator. Thank you. Senator. 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 Sorry. Senator Darnell. Great. My apologies. My apologies. Thank you for joining us today. With that, thank all of you for joining us for the 2014 State of the City. We'll see you next year.